As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Abide in my love. Abide in my love. Hey, Harvest Kids. Bethany here coming at you once again from my couch to your couch. Today we are going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be drawing. So I brought my whiteboard and my marker pens to help me out with today's lesson. So if you have an A4 piece of paper and maybe markers or coloring pencils to help you out with today's lesson, I want you to pause this video, go grab them, and then rejoin us. All throughout the book of Habakkuk, we see Habakkuk questioning God, having conversations with God, because there's things that Habakkuk wants that are just not happening. Habakkuk wants people to stop fighting. Habakkuk wants the people around him to start following God. Habakkuk wants God to do something about it. And these are all awesome wants but for some reason they're not happening and we find Habakkuk frustrated. And in his frustration, he faithfully wrestles with God. In Habakkuk 2 verse 3, we see God tell Habakkuk that he has a plan, that he knows what he's doing, and that it will surely happen. He says if it seems slow in happening, wait for it. Wait on God because it will happen and he will not delay. What are some things that you want? Write them down on the top of your A4 piece of paper. Sometimes the things that we want are simple things like I want to play my game or I want that toy or I want dessert before dinner. But sometimes they're a little more difficult things. Sometimes our mom is sick and we just want her to get better. Sometimes we just want our parents to stop fighting. Sometimes we feel lonely and we just want a friend someone to love us and accept us for just who we are. Sometimes we want the attention of our parents more than we're getting it. And while all these things are good once, what do we do when we don't get them? What do we do when we're told that we have to wait until after dinner to eat our dessert? What do we do when we're told that we have to wait until our sister gets done playing the game for us to be able to play it? What do we do when our mom doesn't get better or when our parents continue to fight and it just seems endless? When it seems like we'll never have a friend that cares about us? What do we do then? Well, today I'd like to show you two responses that we could have when we don't get what we want. One response is called a left turn and the other response is called a right turn. Let me show you what I mean on my whiteboard. I'm going to use my whiteboard to help me draw what we're talking about today, but you can use your A4 piece of paper and whatever coloring utensils you grabbed. Ready? First, let's draw us. Then I want you to write the things that you want right on this line up here. Now I just wrote things I want, but I want you to personalize it and actually write the things that you wrote down when I asked you before, what is it that you want? Maybe you wrote down a toy, or maybe you wrote down a friend, or perhaps you wrote down happiness. Whatever it is, write it down right there. 
Now, since we live in a broken world, there's often things that are standing in between us and the things that we want. There's this barrier or this block. And that block can be filled with many different things depending on what we want. Sometimes it's just the sin and the brokenness of the world that is standing in between us and what we want. So sin, brokenness. <clears throat> Sometimes it's time. We just want something that is not yet to be ours. Sometimes it's unrealistic expectations. But in the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk learned that sometimes what's blocking us from what we want is God. Now, when there's something blocking us from what we want, we often just want to get around that block. We recognize that this can't be removed, so we just simply try to get around it. We want to go like this. Just simply not make it a block in our life. And when we try to simply get around the block, that's when we have taken the left turn. Now, when we have taken the left turn, we've decided that it's our job to get around what is blocking us from what we want. So I'm going to use the example of wanting a toy that my parents have said I have to wait until my sister is done. So right now, my sister is what is blocking me from getting my toy, the thing that I want. When I take the left turn, when I try to get around what is blocking me from getting my toy, oftentimes I try to fight. My sister has something that I want and so I start fighting her to get that something. Or I flee. My sister has the toy that I want, but my parents have told me that I have to wait until she's done. So I've simply run to my room and slammed the door. Or I fix. My parents have told me that I have to wait for my sister to be done. So instead, I make sure that she's done immediately. I push her to the side and take the toy and say, she's done. All of those are examples of me trying to get around the block that is in my way from getting what I want. Now this is not the best way to go. When a block has been put in between us and the things that we want, when we take the left turn, it often goes wrong. We hurt our sister, we hurt our parents, we hurt ourselves by allowing us to feel all of the things that we feel when we try to fight, flee, or fix. So let me ask you a question. When you want something that you can't have, how does it make you feel? In your own words, write on your A4 paper how you feel I've written down a few things that I feel when I want something that I'm not getting. I feel mad and upset. I get annoyed and impatient and oftentimes I like rage. You know, when you feel that feeling welling up in the pit of your stomach and you just want to fight, you want to fight for what you want. But do you remember when we talked about James 4, 1 to 3? When in the book of James, we're told that our arguments and our quarrels and our fighting actually come because we have desires in ourselves that we're not getting. 
And he says that we, that we don't have, not because we don't ask, but because we're asking wrongly. Because when we want something that we're not getting, we start fighting, fixing, and fleeing, and we're asking for what we want wrongly. In Habakkuk, we see Habakkuk asking for what he wants rightly, in the right way, and God answers him. Habakkuk chose to take the right turn. When we take the right turn, we stop trying to fix things on our own. When we choose to take the right turn, we see what we want. We see something standing in between us and what we want. And instead of fighting, fixing, or fleeing, we go to our Heavenly Father and we talk to Him. Do you know that your Heavenly Father wants to hear everything that you have to say? Do you know that he wants to hear when you're upset about something or when something has made you annoyed? Do you know that he cares about the things that you want? About the things that are in your heart that matter to you most? Do you know that? Because he is your heavenly father, you can talk to him. Not only can you talk to him, but you can also wait on him. Because he cares for you and he cares about the things that you want, when we talk to him, we can wait on him to act. And you remember in the first chapter of the book of Habakkuk, God told Habakkuk that he was planning on doing something great, but it was something that Habakkuk would have never even guessed. You see, a lot of the times the things that we want are not what God has in store for us. And not that he doesn't want these things for us, not that he doesn't want us to have our toys or our friends or our happiness or our parents to stop fighting or our mom to be healthy, but it's that he's going to do things in ways that we can't imagine because his ways are higher than ours and his thoughts are greater than ours. And so when we try to fight or fix or flee, oftentimes God is wanting to do something greater in our lives that we just can't see right then. So instead of taking a left turn, he calls us to take a right turn. He calls us to talk to him and then to wait on him. And now when we say wait, he's talking about the word abide. Now you remember the word abide, right? We went through a whole series of how to abide together. And God's calling us to abide in him. To live in him, to have a relationship with him, our heavenly father. And that as we abide, we can wait and talk to him about the things that we want. And he's either going to answer them with a yes or a no or a wait. And while we're waiting, we're either waiting to see what he does and it's miraculous or we're waiting for him to change our hearts and what we wanted in the first place. He changes our hearts to want the things that he wants for us. And we trust that the things that he wants for us are good things because he is a good father, a perfect father, in fact. And if your parents give you the things that you ask for, how much more would your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask, who talk to him, who wait for him and who abide in him. Now, I hope you wrote this all down on your piece of A4 paper. And that is a lot to write down and to think about and to talk to your parents about. 
And the cool thing is that your parents learned the exact same thing from our pastor, Nate, this morning. So what I want you to do is talk through these things with your parents. Start learning with your parents so that they can get to know you better, you can get to know them better, and together you can get to know God better. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you that you are a good father who loves us and cares about the things that we want and that we desire. I pray that when we want something, God, that you would help us take a right turn and talk to you and wait on you, and that you would keep us from taking that left turn that is often so much easier. I pray that you would help us when we see the emotions that are welling up inside of us, when we see that we're getting angry and that we're getting irritated and annoyed with the people that are around us and when we're starting arguments, that you would help us see that we are going toward that left turn and that you would help us begin to make a right turn. Would you help us wait on you when there's things that we want and help us just trust that the things that you want for us are so much greater than we could ever imagine and that they are not slow, but that they are right on time. All we need to do is wait. I pray that you would speak to each child this morning and this afternoon as they talk to their parents about what they learned and what they drew. And God, I pray that you would use this in their life to help them when they want something to make a right turn instead of a left turn. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Harvest Kids, you are loved.